I literally pressed that at the same time it made the ding noise. My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop. As you can see, I need a haircut, I look like a fucking hobo. But, um, the Dell, right, so... <laughs> <laughs> Destructive testing. We love this. I cannot wait for testing. Um, but we missed out last week's one, so let's just let's just crease through that. We're gonna be quick through this bad boy um, because nothing really happened. Uh, to all those who are served, thank you for your service. Thank you, Dell. That's much appreciated. Whatever that means. I just probably would have pissed him right off that. Right, good morning, welcome back. Now Triumph's service schedule tells you to change the fuel filter in your fuel tank every two years or 12,000 miles. Now as yeah, I've got the- Two years or 12,000 miles, and that's not even done 12,000 miles. <laughs> so what it say, I know people are gonna say, it, it, it's gonna degrade over time. Plastics don't generally like petrol and stuff. and it, the thing is, petrol is such a mix of all sorts. It really is just a mix of all sorts of stuff. Paraffin, isoparaffins, and it's parts of it are basically like kerosene, and then there's xylene, and there's benzene, and all sorts of zines that have been added, uh, and ethanol, and all this kind of rubbish. And it does make me laugh, right? People go on about the ethanol thing, um, and that's that's the, the source of all their problems. Now... If you have an ethanol problem, a genuine ethanol problem, right, you go to a fuel that's non-ethanol based, right, and then you go and use another another fuel and it's got the up to 10% ethanol in it. The thing is, there are differences between fuel blends, right, so what Shell decide to put in their fuel versus what BP decide to put in their fuel. If you actually get off your ass and have a look, go onto their websites and you get what's in them, right? And there are differences. Now, people automatically just think it's ethanol because loads of people are screaming about something. It's almost like salmonella and God knows what, right? Or BSE, mad cow disease, if you remember that. Um, it's all of these things like that, right? Someone picks on one little thing and runs off with it, right? And there are plenty of things that are in fuels, right? And plenty of things... Uh, you know, like xylene, for instance. You should use that stuff. It's awesome. Toluene is another one. Benzene is another. That's uh, nasty, nasty, nasty is benzene, right? And they change and vary these quantities. They don't really react with each other. They all do little slightly different things. Help with decoking, help with cleaning, and help with this and that and the other. They help, Some of them slightly help fuel emissions. <laughs> Just, you know, stuff like that, right? Um... It's all about the reaction and all this kind of nonsense, right? The fact of the matter is, is you'll, and people swear, oh, no, I know it's that, because I changed this other fuel, right, that's not E10, and that's it. I don't have that problem anymore. But try a different fuel, right? There are only, I think there's only four major ones that are any really any difference, and the base stock is pretty much the same anyway. But try another one, try a different one. Um, but it just degrades stuff generally. I know some people have been having a problem, and it seems to be quite a common problem with some of the plastic tanks that manufacturers have made. Now, if that happens, it is not the fuel manufacturer's or the fuel's fault. It is the designer of the bike's fault. It is your manufacturer of your bike. They've had, they've been, they've, they've been told about this forever, right? Forever about. In including biofuels and ethanol being one of them, right? We've been using ethanol for donkey's years uh, in, like, rocket fuel and stuff like that. So it's not a new thing. Ethanol, people go on like it's this this wonderful, not wonderful, like it's this enemy of a, a thing. It's, it's one of the base alcohols and, yeah, I, I need to go through it. I, I need to find... A, I want to find an actual example where it does make a difference to certain plastics and where it doesn't. But regardless, um, fuel filters knackered. This is the thing. I, I don't reckon he's ever replaced this. Tank off the bike and I'm going to be painting it. I may as well take the opportunity while I'm at it to flip it over, drop the pump out and change the filter anyway. Then put it back in, seal it all up. And when I've painted it, I haven't got to disturb it again for at least another two years. I don't think and I thought it's the first time. 
I'll share it with you in case it helps you too. I'm on about the beginning of... I'll share yeah. it with you. <laughs> Sorry, let's go right back to the beginning. The beginning of this is... Was it right at the beginning? Picks tank up. Put it on there. No, oh, fuck it, who cares? Any road, he takes it apart, talks a lot of nonsense for a bit. It's never been changed in its life. Now, you notice these things are super clean, and this is inside the tank because it's a solvent, right? <laughs> and nothing's in there. Nothing should go in there. He does all this. It's all nonsense. Then they've got a scouring pad, which is a really cheap way. And if you look at his little baggy, baggy filter, right, um... It's covered in shite. I think that is actually the scourer coming apart. I don't think that's... I've never seen a fuel filter that bad. Even the SV after 50,000 miles wasn't nowhere near that bad. It's a bit crummy. Uh, where is it? There. Yeah, this one. I reckon that's half of that scourer coming off. I don't reckon that's anything to do with fuel whatsoever. Unless he's been, fucking, I don't know, brushing stuff in through the tank. It... That has supposedly got past his chicken wire, uh, his, you know, scouring pad, and then sit on I don't believe it. Don't believe it at all. Don't know what that shit is. Um, or he's put it on there. I don't believe that's a thing at all. Because there's one of the worst things in the world is for you to do a tutorial video and then open it up and everything's spotless and clean. Any road, that was boring. That's why I didn't do it. We've covered it now, and I've done it in less than six minutes. Let's get on to outs in this. It was literally, no, what's it say? It was literally put up 55 minutes ago. I haven't watched this yet. This is going to be amazing. You never know, right? I'm going to say it now. You never know. We might all be educated. Um, and there was a load of arguments backwards and forwards about what plastic it is. He says it's PVC. I want to go with that. It's, it's PVC. Oh, actually, it's got a cord there. Floor Plastic Limited, 1.25 inches or 34 millimetres. So Floor Plastic Limited, it's FLO. Floor Plastic Limited. No, it's do dot fucking, what is it? 34 millimetre. Um, oh, for God's sake. It'll be Waste Systems. No, I want you... Peep. Oh. Uh, have we just got push? No. 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 None of this. Um, underground drainage systems. Medium density polyethylene. That's M MDPE. Wow, weird. Oh, that's all that. So I've got some of that. Just over there. It's good stuff. I didn't know it was medium density, though. Uh, um, could it be uh, wait, rain systems, roof line and winter systems? Oh, yeah, that'll be all guttering, right? Or oh, is that just piping down pipes? No, right. Uh, I could search it, but I like being a dick. <laughs> um, we're gonna have to search it, aren't we? Uh, 34 millimeter. Hang about. It is plast, yeah, it's floor plast. Sorry, I put plastic like a tard. Um, I'm only going here because... Oh, 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 oh. Is that it? Ah. Oh. Well, where's your... No, that's all this stuff. Yeah, it's, it's, it's literally what it says. It's underground. Uh, hot and cold. Oh, my God. No, that's... should be that, but it's not. The, vid the, videos, the video loading has stopped. Oh. ABS. They use all sorts, don't they, if you look at it. Oh, hang about. Is, 
Oh, this is literally just traps. Oh, that's a shame. Oh my god, look how complicated it gets. <laughs> god, you've got a shit website that takes forever to load. Oh, look at every. Oh my god, gaskets, everything. This is amazing. Look what we're learning. Um, can I just get. It can't be. Is it just that? But it doesn't tell us how big it is, does it? So that's 21.5. That's not what it is. You lot suck! <laughs> Uh, what is it? Does it even tell us what it is? OSO1. <laughs> Don't know. Let's have a look at the brochure. Ah, oh, for God's sake. I just want to check, right? Because it'd be so funny. Because these, these things happen. It'd be so funny. Oh, they do 32 millimetre. What's it made out of? Anyone want to tell me? PVC. It, see, it says it produces from white ABS PVC. That's not good because they're two different things. Oh my god! Does it even tell you here what they're made out of? Color, code. No, it doesn't. That's not good. Does this tell you what it's made out of? It just says this. Oh, there, material. Right. So we can go and find it. And once we find it, so this is ABS. 32 minutes, not what it says though, it says 34 on his thing. Did it have a product code? Ugh, not that we can see. Um, this one, that says PVC. So we've got ABS and PVC, but this isn't the right data. 21.5. Waste pipe, 32. But that literally says... Oh, I'm doing it again. That literally says 34. Waste pipe, 32. This looks like they don't sell. <laughs> you see, now I know someone's going to say, Matt, he got it from B&Q, right? Just got... A the problem is we go into their site is that someone has to type it into the B&Q website and out of personal experience, they don't know what they're doing. So I wanted it specifically from the manufacturer. Like, look, you see, you can go here, right? It, and then they'll probably have it. Look there, look, you see, 40 millimeter. See, that's fucking doesn't make any size. 32 millimeter, but it's got 34 printed on it. 50. <laughs> Fuck's sake. 40. <laughs> 21.5. And I don't trust that Screwfix, who does, because they've got thousands of things to put on you, there's a little army of people putting shit on this catalogue. 32. That says that says polypropylene PP, right? It's like, what? <laughs> See, they're all saying different things. This is why you can't trust them. Right, this is why you can't trust these websites. You want to get it from the manufacturers, because the manufacturers, manu they can tell you exactly what plastic it is. Uh, this one, you know, it doesn't even say, it just says lightweight and strong. Uh, you see what I mean? See, it says, so, it says, that says PP. That says solvent weld pipe. That's probably ABS, but who knows? This is the problem. Um, get, uh, uh, what's it? We'll be here all week. What's it matter? Let's get on with it, for fuck's sake. You never know, it might stay somewhere else. Bolt 
well on that Lynn issue, just keeps on pushing it. <laughs> you can get a G clamp or two. And... <sighs> I reckon this is because a lot of people gave him shit about it. But I also reckon it's because of the video I did saying, do you even know what that is? What pipe-wise, right? Do you know the comp bolt modulus, the compressive strength of that material? Now, if you now go out your way to try and say, see, it's good enough. It's like, I didn't ask that. I just asked you, did you know? And the fact of it is you don't know. That's why you're testing it. So there'll be some people who'll be like, egg on your face, Matt, look, you see, it it, it did X. I was like, I never, I never doubted that it would do that. I said, do you even know? And that's it. Now, some people might see that as, look, you're going to say that um, you're trying to get out of it beforehand. It's like, no, the fact of the matter is, is I even said in that video that, and there were a few comments that says, Matt, there is plastic spaces, and then they watched the rest of the video, and I said, there is. Um, what I'm saying is, is that you DIY, you're just chucking shit in and replacing stuff, right? And you've got no idea what, what, it's like reactiveness. That's the, that's the bloody, what was it? The diatribe I went on was the, the oil, the fork oil that you have. Do you know how that reacts to the plastic you've got? And the answer is he doesn't know. I don't know because I don't deal with plastics and whatever's. Right, good morning. Now recently I used a piece of this PVC waste pipe as fork tube spacers and a few people asked, is it strong enough for the job? Good question. I don't know what kind of crushing force that can take, but I have used it in bikes loads of times. I didn't don't believe that. In that pastime, it does work. I must have got inspired over it years ago. Someone else did it and I copied it and it works. Look at the forums. Loads of people do it. However, no, that's not a good, that's not a good reason. I could turn around and say, loads of people are Muslims. Loads of people commit suicide. It, it, so what? The question is, there's more people that commit suicide than people who write it down on forums. I don't get what your point is. Inspired me to find out exactly what it can take. An ordinary piece of PVC waste pipe. What kind of crushing force can you put through that? So I thought I'd make a little test, and I've got a piece of steel tubing. That's 35 mil inside diameter. That's a piece of 34 mil waste tube that fits inside exactly like the spacer on the forks. That's the same. So that's a good test rig. And I've got a piece of solid bar to press down on it with. This represents 34 mil diameter, same as the fork spring. Because when the fork spring gets fully compressed and it becomes a solid bar, that's when the real force is going to hit it. No, no. <laughs> it's not right. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, no, we'll, we'll do a little drawing, but let me just make sure before I make the fuck up of not understand what he's saying. Tubing, that's 35 mil inside diameter. That's a piece of 34 mil waste tube that fits inside exactly like the space. Test, I thought he was gonna, I thought he was gonna test this against this. Spacer on the forks, that's the same. I so don't that's, think that's the clearance. I think it's a bit, it's not that tight. A good test rig. And I've got a piece of solid bar to press down on it with. This represents 34 mil diameter, same as the fork spring. Because when the fork spring gets fully compressed and it becomes a solid bar... No, it doesn't, because it doesn't get fully compressed. You are not going coil bound. So... Uh, right, we've got... Just say it's test rig, or just say whatever, right? And... Uh, is this big enough? Is this fat enough? Let's get your spring in there, right? So... I'm doing this with a mouse, so fuck off. Right, there's your spring in there. Now, what happens is, is let's just say, and we don't even have to use, we don't have to use real numbers, right? We can just do whatever. Oh, every time I go to, oh, just every time I go to use, um, what is it? Change the font size on paint, the whole thing just stops. And it always has done. I don't know what that's about. Um, so when you apply, just say a hundred, a hundred forces. Why have I got this weird bloody ass? Can I just have a normal one? Whatever, that'll do. 
So we apply 100 force, right? Or 100 force. Now, you might have all heard um, about this guy called Newton who said, famously, I don't know when he said it, I think he said it on a Tuesday, he said that for every force, there is an equal and opposite force, opposing force. Or you have an, an, an action and a reactive force, right? An acting force and a reactive force. Now, people seem to think that that means something can't move. Because if I apply a hundred force like this and another, and the reactive force is a hundred force, just say, then how does anything move? But what happens is, is that for this force, there's a reactive force the other way in the object. And if nothing's stopping it, the whole thing just gets moved along, right? So, in a sense, I'll, sh I'll show you what I mean. So what happens is, is that there's a reactive force pushing... Obviously, the spring's pushing back. If you remove... Just say this is your finger, right? If you're pushing that spring down with 100 force, you remove your finger, it pops up. So that's the reactive force, right? But it's also pushing down like this. Right? That's what's happening to the spring. The spring is pushing both ends, right? So you don't need to be coil bound for you to apply 100 F, 100 forces of force through a spring, right? What what happens is is that the spring will yield a bit, right? It'll deform. But it still has the same forces transferred all the way through it. Now, there's a tiny bit of energy lost due to the heating up of the spring because you're deforming it and stuff like that. And then what we have is we have a, a reactive force, the same thing this way, right? We have a, a reactive force there against, the, the which is in this block, really. I should have done that. I should put it in the block. So that's the block there. And, you know... We're pushing this. Oh, you feck. We're pushing there like that through this. And it's the spring is pushing out either way. And that means, right, if we go down a bit, there's a reactive force. There's another... F the, the block is resisting the compression. So there's a force here. And <laughs> there's a force in the, 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 the worktop, table, whatever, right? But this one's the daddy one, right? Hopefully this isn't moving. So what happens is, is that you don't have enough force. Let's just say, to move, to compress the table, takes 100,000, right, 100,000 forces. Right, that's what it takes to compress the table. To compress this block here, we need 80,000, just say, right? And then to compress this block, because we're pushing with this block up here, well, let's just say that's another 80,000, because that's how strong our blocks are. And then to compress our spring, right, it's 60. So if we apply 100 to this, this doesn't collapse. This doesn't collapse. And the table doesn't fucking collapse. But the spring does, right? That's, what you, that's how much force you have to apply to deform that spring. To a given whatever it is, whatever the spring rate is, whatever that spring can take. And just say, if we... You know, the 40 that we've gone over, because we're applying 100, so we're compressing it. We're compressing it by 40, right? And just say 40 force equals 10 millimetres, right? That's what our spring is doing, right? That's how it's going to move 10 millimetres, because that's what happens when you apply 40 to 10. Its spring rate is 2.5 millimetres per uh, 10 of force, or... 0 0.25, right? Forces per millimeter. You know what I mean? That's how you do something like that. So I don't know what the hell he's talking about. This is suspension and springs, right? It's a really funny one. And there are hundreds of YouTube videos of guys that are into bikes and cars who start talking about springs. They don't know what I'm talking about, right? And the other thing is, as well, is that um, another one is heat. Oh my God god um so drive driving driving or drive for answers i think it's driving for answers did a video it was a fuck up really it, it it was more about semantics than it was the actual physics and then he starts talking about friction and adhesion being different things mm, mm, 
Yeah, it was all mushy and gooey. To the point where I had to do another video to explain how... And I, I, the, his response video was a bit ratty because it was his fault. It was his fault he didn't get across what he meant. And he doesn't. He didn't get across what he meant because he doesn't know what he's talking about, right? It's what happens when you Google shit and then start making a video. You research and then you start talking about rubbish. And, uh, yeah. Any road. Let's crack on. That's when the real force is going to hit it. So They don't hit it either. <laughs> Fuck. That's a 20 ton press. Let's get a baseline by looking at the bike and seeing what kind of force is expected to take. Ooh! by the motorcycle and then that's one piece we'll test and we'll test the other one to absolute destruction and see what it actually can oh. take. Now as this won't be a scientific test, let's overestimate everything so at least it's a fair test. First of all we've got two sets of considerations. Right. This is a scientific thing. Right. If you test, if you are doing tests to discover or confirm something that is and i know people are going to start saying the word scientific method it's part of it but we don't even need to be that full on about it it is part of science if you're trying to test things you have units and you are testing a material that's science that's material science destruction and see what it actually can take now, as this won't be a scientific test, let's overestimate everything, so at least it's a fair test. First of all, we've got two sets of considerations. We've got the weight of the rider and the bike, and the stopping forces involved. Oh, we said the word forces. Weight of the rider and the bike we can estimate, but the stopping forces we can only guess at. So let's guess big numbers. The bike, about 220. The rider, about 80. So we've got 300 kilos of dead weight pressing down on the ground. Dead weight. Then we've got the stopping forces. When you brake hard, all of the forces rotate down onto that front wheel. We know that. So let's say, this is rotate. This is painful. I'd say a hundred kilos of downward force through stopping hard. So an extreme stop is going to potentially push a guess of four hundred kilos downwards <laughs> onto those forks. That's quite a lot of pressure. And of oh, course, this right, you're messing everything up here. Right, are we talking forces? Are we talking force? Are we, ta are we talking kilograms of force? Are we talking newtons? Through stopping hard. So an extreme stop is going to potentially push a guess of 400 kilos right. down. Hang about. What is his spring rate? You see, the, he could do this either way around. So, uh, just any bike. Uh, R1 springs. It, it, you can guesstimate to the point of it doesn't matter, right? So... Orleans will probably tell us more. I'm just looking for a serial number, to be quite honest. Um, is it that number? I just want a... What is it? So, Orleans... Is it that number? Or is that just it? Right, there we are. Yeah, it is that number. Um, so, hopefully... There we go. We've got a spring rate. Right, so it's 222, right? And you've got a spring rate of 9.5 newtons per millimetre. So all you have to do, you can fuck his springs, right? doesn't matter. They're going to be eh, within the realm because the bikes are the same weight, approximately. You are, you go the same speeds, that kind of stuff, right? So you say, right, well, how much are we going to compress your springs by? Well, that's easy. You get on the bike and you give it a push. So let's just say it's 20 millimetres, right? So all you do is it's this easy. Right? All you do is you say right. So we co we collapse the springs right twenty millimeters, and you times that by nine point five. Now we're good. Fuck it. It's there's two springs right. So you've got hundred and ninety newtons of force to compress that twenty millimeters, right? Because we want twenty. You just replace the millimeter bit there, and then that'll give you your answer, right? So then you times that by two, right? So you've got 380, right? 380 newtons of force. Now, when you think of gravity and all the rest of it, it's 9.81 uh, newton... <laughs> the acceleration of gravity, let's just put it that way. The acceleration of... Oh, let's put this the way, right? It's kilograms of force, right? to newtons and i just want to show you you got there you see so one kilogram of force is 9.8 newtons 
right? We usually round it up to 9.81. So we've got this many newtons, right? And then you divide that by 9.81, like that, right? So it's 10. It's 10. But 30, if you want to be really thing, it's 38 kilos, right? Now, the fact of the matter is, is that's just if you push down, right? There's this thing called impulse, right? Which is where you... It's how fast it's the rate at which you do that. Now, how fast can you stomp on some what is it it said there 40 kilos right and yeah well let's go 10 right let's just say you can do it really really quickly and let's say it's 400 tons right the reason why i've done it this way and we've got the same number is because he's asked someone and they've probably gone around it that way but he's just reeling off because listen to what he says it's just like oh it's about this and then let's just 400 of downward force through stopping hard. So an extreme stop is going to potentially push a guess of 400 kilos downwards onto those forks. I'd like to know where he got that 400 kilos from and how he got that. That's quite a lot of pressure. And that's not pressure. So if you wanted to go the absolute extreme, then you just double that. You just say a ton, right? You just say a ton of force. Then if you make something that can survive that, and really you'd want two tons because then you've got a factor of four in there, a factor of five safety so for your safety margins. So you'd want about a ton, uh, two tons, sorry, two tons of force is what you'd want. And of course, there's two of them, so it's spread no, between no, no, the two. It's already spread between the two. Evenly, so 200 kilograms, I think, is a fair estimate for the first test. We'll put it in the test rig. No, we'll press 200 ton, no. Press down on it with 200 kilos, which is probably See, the what he's done wrong there is he said oh there's two of them it's like no the fact of the matter is is that of your forks right is the load shared between the two because that's the spring rate that is in the springs obviously we don't know what the spring rate is in his springs most this bike will ever put on those forks if that and we'll see if it bears up to that so he right. also doesn't know so what's he going with he also doesn't know stuff like factor of safety stuff like that We'll put oh, it no, in I need to explain that. So when you design something, this is one of the reasons why F1 engines and MotoGP engines and stuff can do what they do. The reason why MotoGP engines are pretty much getting 300 horsepower out of a litre engine that's naturally aspirated, right, is because they chew into their, sa um, their safety factors, right, uh, a factor of safety. So what is a factor of safety? So basically... The easiest way to describe it is if you are going to build a bridge, right, and you say, well, the maximum amount of cars we can get on this bridge is 10. So the bridge has to hold them 10 cars. Let's just say they're each a ton each. That's 10 tons, right? You don't just go, let's just make sure the bridge can hold 15 tons. That's not enough, right? You want to stay well away from it. And it's because of yields and stuff and all this kind of malarkey. You want to... you Nothing... Nothing too strong ever broke is the, the kind of line, right? And most things in engines are a factor of five. So the, the peak force that your piston can apply due to acceleration going up the bar, um, that can apply to a, a, a conrod in tension, right? Not only can that rod survive that force, but it can take five times that force, right? And then we say that's a good factor of safety, right? We're well away from it. It's also to do with fatigue and stuff like that because you kind of want to stay away from going to what the peaks are. Now, when you've got stuff like Formula One and shit like that, they're like, fuck it, right? If we can make it lighter and lighter and lighter and go faster and faster and faster and eat into that factor of safety, right? That safety factor, then fuck it. If there's more power to be had. The thing is, they don't last very long. Right, that's why in MotoGP, I can't remember how they get now. Is it six or seven or eight? They only get they get so many engines, and that's it. And they only do like 500 miles a race, a maximum a thousand miles per race. You know what I mean? If you do like three races, it's only three thousand miles. The thing's fucked <laughs> because you are really pushing it, and things are starting to fatigue. Um. So yeah, he's missed. He doesn't understand that either rig will press down on it with 200 kilos which is probably the most this bike will ever put uh, on those 200 kilos uh i said about 400 and that's divided up um on the whole system 200 kilos a fork tube 
I can see where he's got that. But he did it backwards for some reason. But he should be testing if, for 400, not 200. If that, and we'll see if it bears up to that. Right, the dial on my press, the first increment it shows is two and a half tonnes. Halfway to that would be one and a quarter tonnes, which is five times what we're expecting it to take. So let's see how close we can get to that. So the other thing is, as well is right, is before you start doing this test, what you've kind of got to do is you've got to say to yourself, right, what am I looking for, right? What am I looking for in terms of a failure, right? What happens if we start seeing cracking or what happens if it starts to change colour? What Really, you shouldn't use a white one, you should use a black one because then it shows stress and strain in the structure, but whatever. Right, straight away, what we can see here right now is that's compressing. It's going out of shape. I want you to test this against the real one. Oh. Oh, now we're registering something. When you compress that, what do you think's happening? <laughs> it, it could be it could be bulging on the inside and going all sorts of weird squashy. And how the other thing as well is how many of them can it take? How many cycles of that can it take? Right. Now what an incredible result. It's deformed a little bit at well, the that's top. Not good then. <laughs> it's got some like bulge in it and a little bulge at the bottom. But apart from that <laughs> This is why I said at the beginning. You have to define what is a pass and a fail. You have to say to yourself, that's no good. That's no good. You could test a rocket engine and come back and go, fucking, oh, fuck me, the engine bell's all cracked. All right. Well, at least it's not to blow up, so let's crack on. You know what I mean? <laughs> it is intact. It's not split. There's no bends in it. Wait, nothing. It's perfectly serviceable. It's a bit shorter now because if you noticed when it's inside the tube and I put the slug in, the first three lines disappeared once I started yeah. pumping. And once it compressed that, that that's the deformation. By about eight mil, it just stopped moving. It refused to move anymore. And then the pressure started to build. Now on the dial, the first increment is two and a half tons and it went halfway to that. So that just took over a ton in weight straight on top of it once held inside a steel tube to support it. That's incredible, and I'm really impressed with that result. So the next well, thing that's deformed left... deformed it. It's not what it was. That is a failure. ...is to put it back in the jig, back in the steel tube, and just keep pumping with the press. I've got 20 tonnes to play with. Let's see what it takes to destroy it. But it is. It is destroyed, you fucking idiot. You imagine you did that with your leg. <laughs> You went to the doctors and you put in a machine like this and pressed it and went, oh, we're going past one of the pen marks, another one. There you go. You're a bit shorter. Your leg's a bit shorter and it's bulged out the top. You're in absolute agony. You're bleeding everywhere. But it, you, it's not destroyed. It's how you fucking... Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Del, you're making yourself like a tit because you don't know what you... I love it. I love it. He just keeps on giving. He just keeps on giving. So that there, that's the plastic deformation. That's it going kinky all over the fucking shop, right? The thing is, the other thing as well is he's sat on a flat base, right? So you've got a cylinder. I'll just use this tape. You've got a cylinder sat on a flat base, right? In reality, it's sat on a spring, and it could start going inside it. It could deform in some other kind of way. The spring surface isn't perfectly flat. If you look on the actual real ones, they've got that insert that makes them sit you know, basically makes them sit in the middle of the spring and not go cockeyed one way or the other. And it's just, I, don't, I don't know what I'm explaining. It, I, it, people, I can't wait to see the comments. People can't be falling for this shit. Fuck's sake. Right there, you really, really, 
that's the naughty thing. You really, it's deforming really bad now. You have to put a lot of force into it. There it goes. Now oh, look. Now, if you can see, right, he's not talking about what's going on. What you can talk about, the pressure goes up and it falls. Pressure goes up and it falls. What's happening is it's deforming. Every time you have to overcome it and then it yields and it deforms, it shrinks in. It's going to it's going to basically ripple in and all bend and twist and go all knackered. And it falls. It falls. It's almost like you're a fucking idiot. That won't fuck it either. I'll do it without the cover on. I haven't seen a man go blind on YouTube in a while. Oh look, it just crinkles in. The weirdest thing is, what I do like about it is it does a triangle. So basically what happens is it'll be a triangle on a triangle on a triangle on a triangle. And it's just nature for you. It's fucking great. So one of the strong, you know, you've always heard triangles are the strongest and the reason why is because it's the least amount of sides to deform right you can't have a straight line obviously so it's the it's the smallest amount of edges that you have and the smallest amount of corners you have for a three-dimensional shape i say three-dimensional shape a two-dimensional shape and um it, it evenly distributes the force between all of those points right uh, so it's it's almost like the state of least energy Right, or to resist those forces. And it's just great, nature's just fucking I'm so glad it works. <laughs> okay, now that secondary test that's completely minced it and it always would have done. It's a soft material, it's in a tube that's got a bit of it's free plastic play. And it's soft. <laughs> and at some point it was always gonna squash sideways and fill the tube up and get wedged. And it did at around two, two and a half times. Did it? I don't think it did. I don't think it did though. I do not think it did. I think you're lying. All right, yeah, sorry. Whoa, whoa, whoa you got a bit far there. There it goes. All right, yeah, two and a half. Well, yeah, we'll give him that. It is supported inside Oops. the foot. Let's go back. Okay, now that secondary test, that's completely minced. It, and it always would have done. It's a soft material. It's in a tube that's got a bit of free play. And at some point, it was always going to squash. That's not free play. That's clearance. How many fucking times? <sighs> sideways and fill the tube up and get wedged and it did at around two two and a half tons but the first test was the relevant one that test proved that we can put over oh, a ton prove now it's not scientific but it's proved of weight downwards on that tube provided and it is form ported inside the fork and it is absolutely safe to go ahead with and use in your bike so well, on that base said safety number two is the chemical attack argument Pff, no I'm safe to use waste pipe in my motorcycles and the other test is let's see how much pressure you can put on one of these factory yeah. plastic tubes because that'll be interesting well no I'd want to see the same test can we see the same test oh look at that that's a lot different, isn't it, Del? Is is that not dawn on you? See, that test's very different. Where are we? Six minutes from 25. So if you notice what happens with this shitty PVC, right, and this is why it's too fucking dumb. Oh, watch what happens. Actually, can I? Oh, can I? Can I? Can I make two? I can. Ooh. Let's do that then. Let's do that then. Let's put these side by side. 
Oh, come on now. It's probably saying, what are you trying to do? <laughs> oh, no, it's there, it's there, it's there, it's there, it's there. Fucking idiot. Right, so what I can do with the magic of television is we can put this one next to this one. Uh, it's not going to work very well, is it? That better. Um, just minimise that one as well. There we go. Oh, no, no, don't do that. Oh, this is what I hate about these things. So, we do that as well. So, what we can see... Right, there we go. I can't press both. So we're just going <laughs> to... This one was the original one. This one is this one. Oh, look. Do you notice that? No, 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 I don't care about the break. Do you notice that? That basically what's happening is, is he pumps and pumps and pumps... And we don't re read any resistance. It's because it's crippling the fuck out of it. This one, straight away. So if we go back to that, we don't need that anymore. We go back to that. Because he's just dicking around, you see. He, he, he's, 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 proved, he's proved something to us without him even fucking realising it. Suit like one pump, two pump, and it starts to register pressure. Right, a resistance. So what that means is that this tube is hardly deforming and it's resisting that, right? That's what matters. And if you look, it's pretty incremental. You can see this shrink and this go up. It, the physical dimension doesn't matter, but you can see there's an instant response, right? Which means that that plastic tube in there right you've compressed it the little tiny bit of plastic def elastic deformation in there's gone and now it's really just resisting it and it's transferring the forces directly to the spring that bit doesn't matter And what did that take, anyway, before he starts waffling on? So, two. Because of how accurate this piece of shit is. Well, it says, it actually, it actually says kilograms per centimetre, oh, centimetre squared, of course. So, yeah, it's about two. We'll just do about 80 kilograms per centimetre squared. Now watch, it'll be a complete different failure to the tube that he's put in. And what that tells you is, is that the tube that the manufacturer and the material the manufacturer and the profile the manufacturer has selected and designed isn't the same as that stupid bit of tubing you put in. Which means it won't behave the same. You do not need to be a material scientist to understand this. They're just not the same. It'd be like this. We've tested this material and this material for your brake pads. This one's the OEM one, and this one, this other material that's cheap or fucking from Tesco's, behaves in a totally different way. And you're like, whoa, what? No, 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 no. I don't... I, <laughs> I want my brakes to be predictable and work in the way that I know, not some fucking random magical shit. If I was trying to prove this point, I'd be like, look, these behave in exactly the same way. They're exactly the same forces. To the point where I can get a bit of the OEM tube in. I can get that OEM, I can get the OEM tube, cut it in half, and I can put them on top of each other and get the same results, not destructively, get the same results as if I swap one half out and put the PVC tubing in and get the exact same results. That's how you show that there would be no difference, right? That... My garden variety being cupid of hosing and this OEM part that costs five times, ten times as much, they are the same thing. 
That's how you do that kind of test. Not this rubbish. He's got two different results. That's strange. Why did that grab the plunger? Not as much clearance as you thought. Oh, look. Look at that tube. Look what's happened. Do you know what's happened there? His plunger's bitten into the material. Yeah, but that, that's, your, that's your piece of test equipment, Dell. It's the wrong size. It even got stuck in the tube. Which means what's happened is, is as he's pressed it, his pusher's come cockeyed. And it's deformed the tube slightly as it's nipped that material. OK, final results. The brittle plastic tubing from the factory, it breaks, kind of shatters. It doesn't shatter, so you're pulling on it. About two and a half tonnes, same sort of pressure as this thing collapsed and minced and wedged in the You've two things in your hand are completely different. Right, so they both fail at around two tonnes plus. doesn't matter. They're totally two different materials. And that failed because of your shit piece of rubbish. But they're both also still absolutely fine at just over but one not. ton. That's completely crushed. <laughs> and that's brilliant. And that's the proof I wanted for myself so that I know I can use my PVC pipe with no worries whatsoever. But of course, if you're in any doubt, then just use steel because you know that will never fail. Just use what the OEM provides you, you dickhead. You've got one in your hand, which is the most stupid thing I've seen. Thanks for watching. He's retarded. He's retarded. Right, so I want this to sink in for people, so I hope that makes sense. And I'll see you in a bit. Fucking dickhead.